All right, we are working on chapter five, exercise 11 in Zach's programming with Visual Basic. And this is the Mills skating rink um, exercise. So we have a list box here with scores from zero to 10. You choose one of them, you hit record score. Um, it keeps track of the score as you choose scores and click record. So if you did like, you know, uh, three, four, six, total score would be 13, right? And number of scores would be three because you submitted three of them. And then 13 divided by three would give you your, your average score. So in this example, two scores are recorded, 10 and eight. That give you a total score of 18, two scores, the average is nine. And then when you hit next skater, this gets wiped out. So not a lot to do with loops, except for this score box where I'm ready to loop to build this. Um, but really just going back to a bunch of um, lessons from previous chapters. So we're kind of putting things together and I've already created the form and the application. So why don't you probably want to pause the video and get to that point. All right. So I need a list box here. Actually, let me look at this. Yep. And here's my list box. I'm going to put a label over this, you know, for designing the, the form, I'm just going to do this and you can, List box was really the only thing that you might have not known what it was here. So that's what this is. Everything else you know how to do. So I'm going to do this quickly. Okay, so this is what my form looks like. I put the output labels in a group box as figure 549 shows. I have three buttons with access keys. Um, there's my access keys. And uh, there's an access key on this score as well so we can get to this. And my tab index is set. I can't maximize, it opened up in the um, center of the screen. It's got a nice name. And I think we're ready to do some coding. And the first thing I need to do is populate this list box here. Um, and I didn't give this a good name. So I'm going to call this LST scores. And this needs to populate when the form runs. So I'm going to double click on the form itself. And that's going to give me an event handler on my base load. So here I need to populate the list box of scores. And I'm going to use a for next loop here. So control K X and a code pattern, conditional and loop for next. And I'm going to say for I equals one. Nope. We're going to start at zero to 10. LST scores dot items dot add I to string. Test this out when I run my application populated that looks pretty good. Um, there's a lot of extra room here. I could have tightened this up a little bit. I think a way to get around this though, is if I just take my, the font on this and just make it bigger, just on that box. There we go. That looks better. 
Okay. And that's important anyway, because that's really the part that we're focusing on. Um, all right, we'll do the exit button. Get that out of the way. So now, when you hit record score, we need to add the current, the, the selected score to the current total score, increment number of scores, and then figure out average score. And remember that you need to remember total score and number of scores between rounds. So to do that, you have two options. One would be you can use a, a static variable or you can use a, a class level variable. And I'm, you know what, I'm gonna do one of each, which is terrible programming practice, but at least I can show you how it works. So I'm gonna double click on that record button. And before I do too much there, I'm gonna create my um, class level variable. So my total score is going to be a class level variable. I'm gonna say <clears throat> private, int total score as integer. And I'm going to say equals zero. Um, if you don't specify the value, integers are automatically set to zero, but I'm going to be explicit here and set that. And then down here, I'm going to say I want my static, um, what do we call this? Number of scores, int number of scores as integer. And same thing, I'm going to say it's zero. So use this or use this. Don't use both like I'm doing. I'm just doing that to show you what's going on. Okay, so class level variable stores total score. Static variable to store number of scores. Okay. I get rid of the toolbox. We're not using that anymore. So I can say, uh, well, first I need to get the what the user had selected. And for our case, this is actually pretty simple because list of scores is starting from zero. So we can either look at the selected index or we can look at the value. So let me create a a variable for this score. This is representing the score this round, okay, as an integer. And then I'm going to int, sorry, integer dot try parse. And I'm gonna take whatever the user selected and I'm gonna put that into this score. So what did the user select? Well, it was LST scores dot selected item. What is selected item? is an object. So can we just convert that to a string? We're going to try that. So that would be if the score, All right? I probably should have done some pseudocoding here. Let, let's finish up the pseudocoding. Okay. Add the score to total score, increment number of scores, and then populate labels which is a uh, total score, number of scores, and average. Now notice, I don't have a variable for average because average is a calculation that can be done very quickly. And you need to determine, you know, everything's gonna have a cost to it. There's a cost to holding the average, and there's also a cost of calculating the average. And if you think about it, the only thing we do with that average is display it. And then we have to calculate it again. So storing it's not doing us any favors, all right? So my general rule of thumb is if it's an easy calculation, don't store it, just recalculate it when you need it. If it's a complex calculation, you might wanna store it. All right, so now let's add the score to total scores. So um, int total score plus equals this score, increment the number of scores, int number of scores plus equals one, right? We always go up by one and then populate these things. So LBL total score dot text equals int total score to string. Um, we might want to do some more to this in a minute. Let's see. 
and then LBL number of scores dot text is equal to int number of scores to string. So remember, we need to convert these numbers to a string to put it into the property, the text property, which expects a string. And then LBL average scores dot text is equal to int total score divided by int number of scores. Can we take that and put it to string? Looks like we can. Great. Let's run it. And I'm just going to run it with 8 and 10. So 8, my total score is 8. I have one score, average score is 8. And then 10, 18, 2, 9. 4, 22, 3, 7.333. Okay. So we might want to clean this up a little bit. And we can say this is a number with two decimal places. All right, let's see how that looks. So four, eight, um, throw a nine in here, do another nine. Let's keep throwing nines until we get a, there we go, 8.14, right? Or if I did, I had to reset everything. Um, if I did nine, and three, three. I'm trying to get like a, a funky number going here. Anyway, you can see it's stopping at um, two decimal places. All right, so now we need to work on next skater. So I think this is good. Let's work on next skater. And when you say next skater, what we need to do is reset total score. Number of scores. These the, we need to reset these variables and then clear the labels. Okay, so I can say int total score equals zero. Int oh I can't do int number of scores here because this is static meaning it retains its value, but it's only accessible in this sub procedure. Hmm. Should have thought this ahead. Okay, so I'm just gonna, pretty simple fix. I'm gonna take this int number of scores as integer. I'm gonna cut that out of there and make that private up here. Or that word static. So if you use two static variables, make them class level. Okay, I'm not perfect, as you see. Okay, so now in total score is zero, but at least we learned a little bit more about the scope of static variables. And uh, int number of scores is equal to zero. So we, we reset those variables, and then we need to clear the labels. So LBL total score dot text, let's set dot text to nothing. LBL number of scores dot text is equal to nothing. LBL average score dot text is equal to nothing. Let's make sure this works. If I say five and then 10 and then next skater and I give that person a zero, okay, it looks like that is working. Every time I hit next skater, that stuff resets. And so does my total score and my number of scores. So in terms of what we learned in chapter five, this was the only loop. Just when you first open the application, it populated the list of scores. Um, we should have thought ahead a little bit more and realized that there's two different sub procedures that needed access to um, both of our variables. So we made class level variables. They were able to stick, stick around there. Um, oh, and you know what, one more thing, these labels, I just looked at the application, these three labels, the alignment is in the middle, not to the left. Little details like that. There we go. Oh, and they're actually showing it to one decimal place. Um, so instead of D, or I'm sorry, N2, make it N1. Just double checking, make sure we have everything here. So that your assignment's right. Okay. All right. And that's everything for the Mills Skating Rink application for exercise 11 in chapter 5.